I'm standing in the middle of this Norwegian forest and I'm about to run a half marathon through it in a perfect straight line only using a map and a compass. So let's just start the run because I guess that this is going to take some time. I created this straight corridor on the map that is 50 meters wide and if I keep inside the line I should end up on a road just outside of my hometown after 21.1 kilometers. Running a regular half marathon I can run around 1 hours and 20 minutes but running through this rough forest will not be my fastest half marathon. My goal is to finish under 4 hours. Here is a tracking of me running that is made from my GPS watch but during this challenge I'm not allowed to use use a GPS watch, only a map and a compass. I was hoping that I was going to keep dry for a bit longer but already this early my line crosses through this big marsh area. So I'm going to get wet and a bit cold on my feet because <laughs> the water here, you can see there is some ice still <laughs> on the water. <laughs> While running through this marsh after just one of the 21 kilometers I was going to run, I realized that this is going to be tough. And you might wonder why I decided to run a half marathon crossing a forest. After being sick for most of the winter and being way too much indoors, I wanted a challenge and an adventure. And this is just my element to do it in. I love running in the forest and I have been competing in the sport of orienteering since I was a child. The combination of running in beautiful nature while while having to be 100% focused on the navigation is something I really love. This is like the, the challenge right here because normally I would just run, run around this, this wet uh, patch here but since my line goes straight through here I just have to... Whoa! That ice did not keep my weight. I just have to try to get through here. Oh. Oh, nice. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of obstacles to, to pass today for sure. Oh, at least at this part of the forest there are no big cliffs, but after looking on the map, I'm going to have to do some climbing I guess later as well. And maybe some swimming too. <laughs> If you don't understood why this half marathon is not going to be the fastest one, you might see why now. <laughs> so this next couple of kilometers looks uh, really runnable on the map, nice open forest here. But the problem here, or the challenge, will be the navigation. Because I have very few big objects here that I can use in my navigation. So I'll have to really rely on my compass handling skills uh, for the next couple of kilometers. And this is a perfect timing to present the sponsor of this video, which is the Swedish outdoor brand Silva and their great orienteering compass uh, Silva Arc Jet that I will be using throughout uh, this challenge. As an orienteer I've been using Silva's compasses for the last 20 years and I'm very happy with this new compass. This thumb compass model has a design that I really like that makes it easy to read the map while checking the direction you're going. It has the very stable and fast Jet 2.0 compass needle that allows me to run fast through this rough terrain and still have the needle being stable pointing to the north. So although it wasn't the easiest running in a straight line at this part of the challenge, Challenge, this quality compass helped me out a lot. Besides this great compass, Silva also makes a lot of different uh, outdoor products uh, for runners. For example, this running vest that I'm wearing to bring some, some nutrition and some film gear. And it's really nice to have a light vest, running vest for a challenge like this one. So thanks a lot Silva for providing me with this gear and supporting the channel. I'm already getting a bit warm, so time to take off the jacket. Maybe it's nice that I will have to pass some wet and cold marshes to <laughs> cool me down. Because it's pretty hard work moving through this forest, although I'm moving at a super slow pace. It's, it's a good challenge for, for sure. So if you're a road runner, I really recommend you to head out in the forest once in a while. Not only is it really a good like injury prevention because it's so soft and nice uh, ground but it's also a really good workout for your heart and your lungs to try to move quickly 
through areas like this one here. So the thing with this part where it's no big cliffs or clear objects that I can follow on the map, I just have to trust that I can have get good enough to stay on the line and I will only know if I have managed to do so in a couple of kilometers when I will pass a small forest road. And there I will see if I pass the road at the correct place. Now it's the moment of true fear. If I have done my navigation correctly, I should end up on a small forest road. Yes, I, th I think I see it. <laughs> now let's just hope that I end up at the right spot so that I can see that I'm still on my line. <laughs> yes! It was a long time since I was so happy to see a road. And there is the turning point of this road. That means that I'm at the perfect spot. <laughs> so that's a small but important victory. But it's still a long way to go. And looking at the map here, the biggest challenge will come pretty soon. dense pretty steep downhill here where there are trees everywhere and this not only makes the running or walking that I'm doing right now slow it also makes the navigation pretty tricky because I can basically see one meter ahead where I'm going so I have to check on my compass all the time to maintain the right direction I lost my microphone going down there. I really hope I can find it again. Ah. That is going to be tricky to find. Yes! <laughs> oh, I spent half an hour looking for this this little microphone and it was hanging in this tree oh. can you hear me? <laughs> okay now I can finally continue again now I have to really focus up again after that uh, microphone rescue mission keep trying to stay on the line and it, it looks like I will be facing some funner but pretty tough challenges coming up this mountain that I'm heading into right now. I can see some, still some snow in the forest. So this cliff here would for sure have been impossible to, to pass. But I think if I just move a bit here, I should be able to find a way where I can pass here and still stay within my line. Yeah, this looks doable. It was really challenging planning this route to try to find a line that goes for this long through the forest without any impossible cliffs or rivers that would be too unsafe or simply impossible to pass. But I did my best and so far it has been possible. But there are some upcoming challenges for sure. Look at this super nice open forest here. Here I can actually pick up the pace a bit. <laughs> okay, that open nice forest only lasted for so long. Here it is, pretty, pretty dense again. Ah. Ah. I, I think I can maybe climb use that little tree to climb 
Okay. Oh, that did not work. Oh. That was not so sturdy. Yeah, this tree should be possible to use. The reward is that I get to enjoy this really nice terrain up on the mountain here. This is what I love about forest running. It's so varied, you never get bored. I think going through those wet and super dense forest parts is what really makes you enjoy when you get out on parts like this. Where it's open and you get to see the sun <laughs> and it's just nice. And here I can pick up some some speed as well. Hopefully catch up some of that lost time from that microphone debacle. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! sighs> I'm about to head into my first river crossing here. So hopefully it's not too deep. And you can see the, the river. So my line goes through here and it looks yeah, it looks pretty <laughs> it looks pretty deep but maybe I can use these oh, oh shit that deep that's deep oh, oh. cold water <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't too deep nice that one was okay, but what I'm dreading is a river crossing that I have to do later on that looks like a pretty big river on the map, so hopefully that one will be fine too. So this is the point I have been dreading the whole day. This river crossing here. Oh, it looks deep. I had hoped it wasn't going to be this deep, but at least I have this uh, nice tree here that I can probably use. But I will have to swim over here. That was cold. Ooh. Ah. Ooh, that was really cold. But I made it over. I had to leave the line just slightly because of this fence here and that uh, river crossing. But from now on, I'll try to keep exactly on the line. I've been out running for three hours and 30 minutes. And I have a long way to go, so I have to realize that I'm not going to be able to do this under four hours. Which is okay, I spent a lot of time searching for that microphone and so, so. Now I just have to finish as soon as possible, and my new goal is to finish before three o'clock to be able to pick up the kids from daycare then. So that's really motivating, so now I'm just trying to pick up the pace and just run as fast as I can with these tire legs. Ooh. In order to finish in time for my new goal to pick up the kids at daycare, I needed to get it done under five hours. If I was going to do that, I really needed to speed up. So although my legs were starting to get really tired, I fought with everything I got, but the navigation always becomes trickier when you start to get really tired. So I managed to lose the line for a bit, but I realized it's soon enough to not continue that long in the wrong direction. I'm really starting to feel it now, but it's not that long to go. Uh, I wanted a challenge, so <laughs> if I wouldn't have gotten tired, 
It would have been sort of a disappointment, but it's still tough now and my brain is <laughs> it's not working as good as it did a couple of hours ago, so I really have to remind myself to keep navigating and keep checking the compass all the time. But just two kilometers to go and I will be there. Closing in on civilization again, it was clear that I didn't achieve my initial goals of running under 4 hours and running a complete perfect line the whole way. But although my line wasn't perfect, I had pretty much a perfect day out there where I got to challenge myself both physically and mentally. And if I manage to navigate good enough to end up where my line ends, it looks like I will make it with margin to pick up the kids. Almost there! And now it's the moment of truth, because if I have navigated correctly the whole day I should end up on a gravel road right here that is right outside my hometown. Let's see, 21.1 kilometers on the watch and look at that! <laughs> I made it! If you want to see me challenge myself even more in beautiful nature you can click here to see when I ran a 100 kilometer mountain ultra marathon. Train smart, have fun, and I will see you in the next video.